Welcome to Ski Cap Hoodie and Shorts, Episode 37, Three State Step. Hey everybody, how you doing today? My name is Ted Samaras and I am your host on the Ski Cap Hoodie and Shorts podcast. And today we are going to be talking about um, what it's like to stand in multiple states at the same time. And specifically, we're going to be talking about three states um, at the same time. So I know a lot of you guys are out there doing your summer road trips, right? It's, uh, you know, it's just past 4th of July weekend, um, if you're hearing this uh, on the official launch. And so uh, I know here in the United States, it's a big deal to stand in different territories at the same time. Uh, I know people get a kick out of, well, maybe just people like me, um, get a kick out of uh, standing in multiple states at the same time. They like the straddle borders. Uh, I know that also goes on, you know, uh, in different countries like throughout Europe and Asia. Um or, you know, different provinces up in Canada. And um, a lot of times, too, uh, you know, it does involve, like, you know, uh, crossing a bridge or a major um, waterway or something like that. So, like, as an example, um, like, if you go to Hoover Dam, um, I've been lucky enough to do that once, uh, you actually cross from Arizona into Nevada or vice versa, depending on which way you're going. And so when you are standing there, um, when you, you know, if you pull over real quick on the side of the road, even though you may not be supposed to, um, you can actually stand in both Nevada and Arizona. And what's interesting about that is that you can actually stand in two different time zones as well, with um, Nevada being Pacific and Arizona being Mountain. Um, of course, you know, sometimes those times are the same, even though they're two different time zones. And that's a conversation for um, a different episode. If you are into time zones, check out the episode uh, that we've already published on time zones, where, you know, if, um, you know, Arizona is in Mountain Standard as it stays all year, and Nevada is in Pacific Daylight as it is in the summer, um, it's actually the same time, even though it's two different time zones. Uh, but I digress. We're here to talk about um, more about standing in multiple states at the same time. Um, the most famous one of these, even if you're not from the United States, is the Four Corners, um, which is in the Southwest. And what it is is basically it's a monument where four states come together. And, um, you know, as these four states are fairly, you know, when I use the word square or rectangle in this episode, you know, you'll have to give me some leeway. Um, but, you know, as the states move further out west, like especially in the middle of the country, a lot of the states are more squarish or rectangular-ish. Um, and so here, the way the borders line up, you can actually stand in um, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico all at the same time. Uh, and then, uh, to be honest, you can actually stand, uh, when it comes to time zones, if you're doing this in the summer, you can actually stand in Pacific Daylight, Pacific, um, I'm sorry, Pacific Daylight, Mountain Daylight, and Mountain Standard all at the same time, too. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty empty place uh, if you've ever gone out there, and I've never been fortunate enough to, um, even though I've been to a couple of these states, um, to go to Four Corners, and you kind of, you know, drive through like a no-man's land almost, and you kind of cut into the, I believe you cut into the Navajo um, Nation as well, um, which is another topic for time zones. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a pretty barren place to make that trek out there um, from, let's say, like Flagstaff or a place like, you know, Albuquerque or, you know, Denver, something like that. Uh, to do this, but a lot of people do because the uh, the idea that you could put your foot down and stand in four states at the same time is actually pretty cool. Um, but that is the only place in the United States that you can actually stand in four states at the same time. So I was like, okay, well, I know that there's a lot of places you can stand in multiple states, although usually it's over water on a bridge. Um, I know like going from New York to New Jersey, um, you know, I know I'm crossing into the state often or if I'm going from over the Delaware Memorial, I'm going from New Jersey to Delaware or into Pennsylvania, um, et cetera, et cetera. I know like um, I've been to New Hope a few times in Pennsylvania and uh, there's like um, a walkway on uh, the little bridge that crosses the Delaware where it's a little thinner at that point and you cross into Lambertville, New Jersey um, and you can actually stand in the bridge and go Pennsylvania one foot, New Jersey the other. 
But I was like, okay, well, if we've got, we know that we're limited on our four states and we have a decent amount of two states, what about three states, right? Um, you know, I've heard the myth that there's places that you can, um, you know, stand in three states. So as I do sometimes, I'll just be staring at a map, um, sometimes to clear my head, sometimes as I'm thinking about something else. But um, I do like to look at like maps and, you know, space and uh, other type of things that maybe other people aren't so interested in. Um, and I was taking a look and looking at the way the map lines up, there actually are, there is actually potential to stand in a lot of uh, three states at the same time. So to give you an example, uh, there's actually like a, uh, a, a marker uh, for the th called the three state corner marker, which is in Joplin, Missouri. Uh, and you can actually stand in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri at the same time. And then as I did a little more research on this, um, I know I'd have to have my foot exactly in the Chattanooga River if I did this, or, or I'm sorry, um, but yes, but... Uh, I would be standing in um, in the, the Chattooga River, actually. And so the Chattooga River, I know you guys like when I have these little like uh, foul-ups on the podcast. But the Chattooga River, uh, I can actually stand in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia at the same time. Uh, and so um, there's a marker that's there so that this way you're within an approximate uh, area. Uh, to it without having people jumping into the river to say they are in three states. Um, there's also the Stone Monument, right, in Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. And then um, there's also in Williams County, Ohio, um, you can actually stand in Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan at the same time. Um, and so, again, you know, pretty interesting. And having been to... Um, you know, that area of Ohio and Kentucky and uh, and Indiana, actually on the south side of uh, Ohio, not the north side where this marker is, I've actually done it where I've taken the bridge from northern Kentucky into Cincinnati, Ohio, and then hop right back on a bridge that took me into, um, you know, back over um, and then cut into Indiana. So within like 10 minutes, I was able to hit three states. But because you have the Ohio River running through, uh, you don't necessarily get that whole sensation of standing in three states at the exact same time. Okay. Um, so now, you know, you may have heard of, um, you know, some of these markers, but like, you know, more locally, um, you know, if you're listening to this and you're, you know, local to me, um, you know, there's actually one in Maryland. Um, it's a, uh, called the tri-state point where, well, you know, a lot of these have these, you know, everything's got to be called tri-state, right? Which makes sense because you're standing in, uh, three states at the same time. Um, and so, um, this one here, uh, actually, um, you can stand, if you're in Northeast Maryland, you can actually stand, uh, in Maryland, Pennsylvania and Delaware at the same time. And if you're in, um, North Jersey, um, closer to me, um, on the, you know, going north instead of going south, you can actually stand in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania at the same time at the Tri-States Monument, which is near Port Jervis, uh, New York. Um, so if you're ever looking to do any of these, um, you know, there's definitely ones even local to me if that's where you're, um, you know, listening from. So realistically, um, there are quite a few places in the United States that you can do this. I didn't realize it was so many, but I guess it makes sense because as you look at the map, the types of um, geographical features that don't allow you to stand in four states at the same time, the way the boundaries are drawn, actually allow you to stand in three states. So if you could picture just you pick your random state in the middle of the country, if you drive out to its furthest west or furthest east or further south, north, whichever way you're going, right, inevitably you are going to go into another state. But what may happen is, is that as you get to the border, if you're kind of going in the middle of your state, like let's say you're going in the, uh, you know, you know, whatever, you're going in the middle of uh, South Dakota, right? If you go, if you keep going west and you cut kind of right, you're going to eventually wind up in Montana. If you go straight out, you're eventually going to wind up in Wyoming. And if you go down and to the left, you're going to eventually wind up in Colorado, Utah. And so like those states um, actually line up there because the squares aren't like, you know, exactly side by side. They're kind of uh, off skew a little bit. So that, so what doesn't allow for the four corners 
in many places only one it allows for the three corners so I was like okay so how many of uh, you know so how many of us you know really know how many of these there are so as I was doing some digging um, I came across an article a couple of years from a couple of years ago uh, in the Rome in Georgia not Italy but the Rome News Tribune and um, there's actually 38 spots in the United States where three states come together, um, but only 20, but 23 of those are actually in the middle of rivers, streams, or lakes, according to the article. So in bodies of water, which only leaves you with 15 places on dry land. Um, but so if you really want to put your foot right at the spot, you got 15 places to do it here. But symbolically, you can do it in 38 because many of these places that the, where it's in the water, um, they do have a marker there. Um, so, uh, you know, so you do have 38 places. So, you know, I know, uh, sometimes we always worry about, um, you know, hitting the, the most famous spot, like, and everybody's got to go to the four corners, but to be able to stand in three states at the same time is actually pretty cool. Um, and now this is something that I will look forward to more, um, as I try to chip away at my, uh, my fascination with trying to get to 50 states, uh, time and money allowing uh, in my life. Um, another place that you might look to, um, it was also a place called onlyinyourstate.com. Okay, and again, um, this is a website too that, you know, I was able to find some information on, uh, specifically about like, you know, like the Williams County in the Ohio, Indiana, Michigan area, uh, and some other places as well. So believe it or not, if you are into this and or you are looking for something to do, um, and you don't mind going off the beaten path, um, there are websites here that will actually help you out. Um, you know, this is good too. Uh, you know, especially like if you're doing like the solo trip, right? I know it's uh, sometimes difficult if you have a car full of people who all want to get someplace and you take the two hour detour to go to a stone monument in the ground that says you are now standing in three states and then turn around and go back and look for the major road. But if you are looking for something to do for a day trip or a side trip um, or just to be able to do this and take the picture and put it out on social media or just keep it for yourself and just have that experience. Um, yeah, this is an awesome way to do it too. So as always, um, you know, this show runs great on your feedback, right? This is what keeps us going here on the podcast. Uh, we try to put out sometimes uh, some offbeat topics like this, um, but we know that there are people out there who actually uh, find this interesting or may not even known that they would find this interesting unless you put a topic like this out there. So as you go for your summer road trips or as you, uh, you know, do trips on another time, um, let me know, you know, where you stop. Let me know if you've done this already. If you're, you know, part of the club that tries to get into the, uh, you know, 38 spots, let me know if you jump in a river uh, <laughs> to be able to hit the actual marker. Uh, I'd be fascinated to know. And like I said, um, you know, I'm big on trying to cross state borders where possible. Uh, but now that I have have, uh, know that there's so many more markers for these uh, three states in the United States, uh, I will be looking to hit these a little bit more. So if you want to contact us, um, you know, feel free to do so. You can go to the website, which is www.skicaphoodieandshorts.com. Uh, we have all our episodes uh, streaming there as well as um, some other content. Uh, if you want to email us, email us at skicaphoodieandshorts at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to reach out to me on social media, best way to do that is on Twitter at my main handle, which is at our tech coach. Uh, if you want to see some great educational programming uh, that I do with some um, global educational leaders around the world, uh, feel free to go to my main website, which is www.ourtechcoach.com. And for those of you who um, you know would prefer to see this on YouTube, um, you know, don't forget now uh, on our YouTube channel, uh, we are also putting out a simulcast of this podcast. Um, so again, always thank you very much for your time. Um, you know, I know how valuable it is. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to take a listen to this. As always, be good to yourself and be yourself. <laughs>